everyone, I'm Sarah Gore, and today I am making mac and cheese. I'm gonna make a basic mac and cheese, a creamy stove top, no bake, and then we are gonna take it over the top, and we're gonna blow your mind. So today we are on the Upper West Side in one of my listings at the Apthorpe. In the heart of any home is the kitchen, so why not give it a test run? And nothing says welcome home like a comfort food meal. And the ultimate comfort food meal is mac and cheese. cheese. So I'm gonna show you today how to make a creamy, no-bake, stovetop mac and cheese that will even impress the biggest gourmands in your life. So we have butter, shallot, garlic, flour, milk, heavy cream, Dijon, cheddar cheese, Parmesan cheese, Fontina cheese, and then of course the pasta of your choice. So one important thing when you're cooking is to always prep before you start cooking because then everything's ready for you and this huge counter island is very helpful when you have to do things like that. So I am gonna start with my clove of garlic. You could grate it, you could chop it. I like to start by smashing it because it really kind of breaks it down. And then you can just chop away. With this you want pretty, a pretty small mince, so you're just gonna keep chopping. If you wanna make a paste out of it, you can add a little bit of kosher salt. I use the salt as an abrasive to really get it finely chopped. So now I'm gonna chop my shallot. I'm just gonna slice it this way. Okay, so now we're gonna cook our pasta. Always start with heavily salted water. You want your water to taste like the sea. So if you think you put some salt in, put some salt in there, no. Taste it. If you feel like you just got a gulp while you were swimming in the sea, you're good. We are doing a half a pound of pasta. We're gonna start our sauce with a roux. And a roux is basically a fat and a flour. Yeah, I said fat. It's gonna be fattening, so get used to it. We're gonna start with a little butter in a pan. We've got three tablespoons here. I've started around medium heat. And we're gonna let, let that cook down and we're gonna give all of our aromatic flavors right in here with the butter. So I'm gonna throw right into this my chopped shallot and my garlic. Okay, so we're gonna saute that a little bit. You really want any garlic or shallots to be translucent because you don't wanna get a bite of raw garlic and if you don't kind of cook that enough before you get all those other flavors in, it's gonna be bitter, it's, you're gonna taste that, it's not gonna be good. It's gonna be better if you overcook it too, so don't do that. So I'm gonna throw my flour in and this is the thickening agent. So you're gonna cook the flour in the butter, which is the roux, until this flour and butter starts to bubble up because what it's doing is cooking that flour taste out of it because you don't want to taste any gritty flour in your sauce. So this kind of prevents that from happening. All these flavors that we're using today, if you cut some of the dairy out of it and add some wine, I mean, you got a fondue. This is what I'm talking about. You get the basics and then you can switch it up and make something completely different. Especially when you have all of these ingredients left over and you're thinking, what am I going to do with all these things? You come up with ways when you know the basics. So let's talk a little bit about ratios. So if you're doing three tablespoons of butter, you want three tablespoons of flour and three cups of dairy. It's kind of easy that way, or four, four, and four. So I do four, four, and four if I'm doing a pound of pasta. We're gonna do less than that, so it's gonna have a lot of sauce, which you really want because some of that sauce is gonna absorb into that pasta, and you don't want a dry macaroni and cheese. That's like the death wish of macaroni and cheese. Okay, so this is bubbling up. You know that that garlic and shallots are all cooked. The flour is cooked out. Now we're gonna add our dairy. So we are adding two cups of milk to this. And one cup of heavy cream. Now you can do different uh, milk and dairy ratios. Um, but you just don't wanna use non-fat milk and you don't wanna use all heavy cream because it would just be too much. So you wanna lie someplace in the middle there. So we're gonna cook this, it's gonna thicken and that's gonna be the base of your sauce. I'm gonna add now my Dijon mustard to this because for me, the Dijon kinda wakes everything else up, including all the cheeses that you're gonna use. So I'm gonna season this with some salt, some pepper if you have it. So that is the basic level that you need here. It's the bechamel. And a bechamel is the base of a lot of different sauces, but it's definitely at the base 
of a mac and cheese creamy sauce. Keep stirring it and let it thicken so that it coats the back of a spoon and then you're gonna add your cheeses. Okay, so this is where I'm really happy <laughs> because this is like a beautiful, beautiful creamy sauce right here. I mean, it just like makes my heart sing. So I'm gonna do three different kinds of cheese here. You can do as many kinds of cheese as you want, but you wanna kind of build the layers of flavor with different kinds of cheese because every cheese gives you something different. So I'm gonna add the creamy, creamy, creamy Fontina because it melts really well and it's really mild so it mixes well with other cheeses. So I'm gonna add that right in. If you can, try to shred your own cheese because when you buy those pre-shredded cheeses, they come with like an anti-caking, um, anti-clumping uh, elements in them, ingredients in them, so they're never gonna be as smooth as if you just kind of shred it yourself. So we've got this fontina in there. I'm gonna use an extra sharp cheddar. A cheddar is the go-to basic for any mac and cheese. It also is a good melter, but it has a little bit of sharpness. So you're even giving it a little more bite, which is another reason why I like the Dijon. And then of course, I'm gonna add some Parmesan cheese. Like originally when they made mac and cheese and they developed mac and cheese, they used to just be made with Parmesan, which I love and I have made before, but still I like the layers of these cheeses. So we have three cheeses in there. If I were to add another, it could be a stinky cheese. Don't be afraid of a stinky cheese because that's where you get a lot of depth. I'm a Gorgonzola fan myself and it's good in the mac and cheese, but we're keeping it basic today. So I'm just gonna use these three. The saltiness from the Parmesan, the creamy Fontina, the sharpness from the, from the cheddar, and it's starting to come together. So we have our sauce, we have our cheeses in there. If you wanna add a little bit of cayenne, a little paprika, give it a little bite, you could do that as well. But I'm gonna leave it just like this, because just like this. Okay, now I gotta add my pasta. Okay, so we are adding elbow noodles, kind of the go-to for mac and cheese. And what I like about it is you get a lot of sauce kind of caught up in those noodles. Um, and they go really well with the next thing we're gonna make. So I'm gonna pour the pasta into the sauce now so we're not using another pan. And the one thing that I always do with pasta is every time I take the pasta out, before I dump it out, I take a cup full of that pasta water because there's so much great starch in there. All that starch that cooks out, you wanna keep it, whether you're making mac and cheese, but more importantly for all other pasta dishes that you're making because it helps that sauce thicken and cling to those noodles. It's like a little Velcro for the noodles. So I'm gonna throw these in. But with this, we want al dente pasta because it's gonna continue to cook in the cheese sauce. And that pasta right now is saying, thank you. <laughs> oh, I do like a nutty cheese. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we're gonna mix that up and we are like basically done with this basic mac and cheese. That is what I'm talking about. All right, so I told you it was gonna be easy. How easy was that? It is done and I feel like maybe 20 minutes tops. So you're gonna serve it just like this, maybe add a little bit more of that cheddar cheese, just to give it a little color. That's our mac and cheese, our creamy, no-bake, stovetop mac and cheese. But why keep it simple when you can take it over the top and that's what we're doing next. We've just got some thick sliced white bread here. You could use sourdough, you could use any of your favorite bread that you like. I'm gonna put some cheese right down on there. So let's let that brown that cheese melt a little. I've got cheddar here. You can use any cheese that you want on here. You could layer it up. You could do more slices of cheese on here if you really want to take it over the top, but I think we've got enough cheese in our mac and cheese. And to this, I'm gonna add some pulled pork. Pulled pork is so flavorful and so delicious. I'm also gonna add some caramelized onions to this because I love them and it gives a little sweetness to the dish. But you can really make this your own. If you don't have pulled pork and you don't wanna use pulled pork, you could use short ribs, would be amazing in this. You could do sliced steak, you could do bacon. The sky is the limit here. And as we said, this is an over the top dish. So have some fun with it. So we have one side that's already browned. I'm gonna take the other piece, butter side down, and that's a lot of butter. You want a lot of butter. That's what's gonna give it that nice brown color. Another piece of cheese. Three is too many, one is not enough, two is perfect. So we're gonna pile on our flavors now with our pulled pork. Okay. 
I've got my pulled pork on here. I'm gonna pile on some mac and cheese. Because like I said in the beginning, there is gonna be some fat in this dish. I'm not gonna just stop there. I'm gonna add the caramelized onions because they add that really nice sweetness. They're really rich. Oh, it smells so good. And you can sweat those down in like 20 to 30 minutes. They'll take about. So now I'm gonna just take that other piece of bread that's already browned, and I'm gonna flip it right on top. Isn't that a perfect, perfect color? Wow, that is gonna be so good. <laughs> I'm gonna let that continue to brown on the other side and we're gonna let those cheeses melt and it's gonna come together and it's gonna be take me to my happy place. It smells so good. Make sure you get through that whole thing. This is gonna be a masterpiece. Before this falls apart, I'm bringing Steven in. He's my food stylist because I couldn't do this by myself. So Steven, let's take a bite. This looks fantastic. Holy cow. <laughs> Cheers! That is everything I needed it to be. Steven, thank you so much. And guys, if you like what you saw today, the links are in the description as well as the recipes that we cooked today. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you want to see next time.